Okay, structural analysis. Methyl methanoate, the ester, and ethanoic acid, they have the same formula but different structures. Uh, so that's kind of the, uh, the answer before we've even started, but let's, uh, let's continue. Uh, we might ask you to calculate the empirical formula, first of all. So I see I've got carbon, I've got oxygen, and I've got hydrogen. I'm putting their molar masses underneath. I've designed this question to work with integers. 40% of that, 53.3% of that, 6.7% of that. Okay, let's do uh, the maths. Okay, let's divide by the smallest now. Divide by 3.3, 3.3, and 3.3. And that's going to give me one carbon, one oxygen, and two hydrogens. What's the mass of that? That's 12, the molar mass, which is 12, and 16 plus 1 plus 1, that's 30. So the empirical formula, EF, you can't use those shortcuts. You have to write the words out, is 30 grams per mole. And the real thing is 60, that's in the question, so the real thing must be twice that big. So C2O2H4. Yep, and we kind of knew that already because it's ethanoic acid, methyl methanoate. But let's move on. Let's move on with infrared spectroscopy. So that uh, measures to see what sort of bonds are present in the molecule. So are there uh, carbon-hydrogen bonds present? Are there carbon oxygen bonds present, that's what it does. It shines infrared light through and monitors uh, in a way you don't need to understand what sort of bonds are present. Well, I can see that there are different bonds in the molecule, so this should work to discriminate between them. For example, I see a CO bond here. Oh no, a CO bond there. Oh, hold on, that's the same. Is there a unique one? Yes, there's a CC one here that's unique. That doesn't appear in this one at all, okay. So infrared should be able to distinguish. Let's go through, turn to table 20, there it is. Please don't sue me IB, fair use. So I've got 3090 and 3090, what's that gonna be? 3090, uh, that's carbon hydrogen. Okay, okay, okay. So we've got this bond here, this bond here, this bond here dealt with, and also over here, these three bonds are dealt with. Now we've got 1750, 1750 is that one there. So that's gonna tell me it's an ester, C double bond O, lovely. So that's C double bond O for an ester. That's H and that's CH. Uh, 1050, 1050, I see that. And again, it's an ester and that's the carbon oxygen single bond over to ethanoic acid. I've got 2700, what's 2700 gonna be? 2700, uh, it's within that range there, isn't it? So that's gonna give me carboxylic acid OH. So that's gonna be this bond in here, OH for carboxylic acid. And then this 1700, What's that going to be? 1700. Nice. So that's going to be a carboxylic acid, C double bond O, C double bond O. And these are carboxylic acids. That one there. There is no CC. Hmm. So even though we could use that to unambiguously identify it, in the IB chart it isn't present. Hmm. So let's push on. Uh, in the knowledge that in real life, they just look at the fingerprint region here and here and unambiguously identify it without all this tarting around with tables. Of course, this is 21st century. And mass spectroscopy. So mass spectroscopy turns your molecules into ions, paradoxically, by shooting electrons at them. You don't need to know that anymore. And then shoots that through the machine. Well, this has a molar mass of 60 grams per mole, as does, as does that. And that gives us the peaks here and here, M plus and M plus, the molecular ion. What about these ones then, Thornley? Ah, those are isotopes of carbon. A little heavier, a little lighter. 
Now, what you're allowed to do is make one cut with a pair of scissors anywhere you want, but not carbon hydrogen. Don't do that, because otherwise you're going to have an enormous amount of uh, fragments. And in IB, I don't think it cuts the carbon-oxygen double bond. It's too strong. So you're allowed one cut across a single bond that doesn't break the carbon-hydrogen. That's the rule. Okay, so I've got something that weighs 45, so it must have lost 15. So if what's lost 15, 15 is this. Oh. So this has gone, and this is left as being 45. So that's my CO2H+. Plus. All right. What's next? Uh, that's for the 45. For the 31, 31 and 60, well, I seem to have lost 29. So what could have come off if it's 29? Hmm, which one of those is appropriate? It's this one. This is 29. So that's come off, leaving this as my 31. So my 31 is CH3O+. Plus. Now with the 29 and 60, Getting a bit messy, but we can follow along. Something with a mass of 31 must have been removed, which is this thing here. That leaves this at 29. So that's going to be a CHO. CHO. Don't forget the plus. If it's not plus, it won't go through the machine. Oh, that's minus. That should be plus. And finally, 15. So 15 and 60, it's lost 45. So what has a mass of 45? This. So that's been cut off, leaving this 15 here, CH3+. plus. Okay. There's a 15 there, CH3+. plus. 17 means that I must have knocked off everything except for the 17. So the 17 is that part of the hydroxyl group, the alcohol. So if that's gone, no, that's stupid. If this is gone, that leaves me with 17 here. So 17 is going to be my OH plus. What's going to give me uh, 43? Uh, 43 and 17, okay, I can do that. This is gone leaving that as 43. So my 43 is going to be CH3CO. And 45, well, that's going to lose a 15, isn't it? The difference between that and that is 15. So that means that's gone and left me with 45 here. Yep, confirmed down there. So that's 45 is CO2H. And again, make sure you've got those pluses. Whew. Yep, so mass spectroscopy can definitely tell the difference between them. There's some unique peaks here, essentially the 17. Once you see the 17, you know you're dealing with the OH from the carboxylic acid. And for H1 NMR, well, that only measures hydrogens. Uh, so something like carbon dioxide would give no signal, no hydrogens, uh, measures the different sorts of hydrogen environments and the ratio of hydrogens in those environments. First of all, we can ignore the TMS, tetramethylsilane, which is at zero. That's just the solvent. Looking at the vertical parts, that's a one to three ratio, and that's a one to three ratio. Well, on the face of it, that doesn't really help. There's a, a three to one ratio of hydrogens and a three to one ratio of hydrogens and a three to one and a three to one. So it looks like H1 NMR won't do anything, but that's not true. The positions are important. So at four is these three here. So let's just check. That's going to be yeah. So that's the estery hydrogens. Now this doesn't have a number next to it. And that's the IP's way of telling you it's not on the chart. So even though it's eight, it's not on the chart or in the right spot or they don't have it. So you can just ignore that. 
Over here, I've got 11. That number's been written, so you need to pay attention to that. And it's just one hydrogen. It's three to one ratio. Uh, and so it's probably going to be that one, the carboxylic acid hydrogen. Where's that one? There it is. And you can ignore the ones from the methyl because they're not quite in the right spot, but that's where they are in reality. Whew. Okay, this stuff is a little tricky. I'll be the first to admit that. Uh, and I've gone through quite fast, but it's a video, so you can rewind it or listen to me slowly. Uh, and we're done.